It's been over a decade since the original Jack and Daxter game, and now the first three have been remastered in high definition for the PS3. The first game begins with Jack and his mischievous friend Daxter exploring Misty Island, despite being warned of its danger. I think we're in trouble! After a minor accident where Daxter is transformed into an Otzel, a hybrid between an otter and a weasel, the pair set off to transform Daxter back into his human form. Are you going to keep yapping or are you going to help me out of this mess? To explore new areas, you'll need to collect power cells, and these can be gained by doing quests for people about the place or by finding precious precursor orbs. There are various types of eco power-ups that temporarily enhance your moves. Blue eco makes you faster, red eco makes your attack stronger, and yellow eco lets you shoot energy projectiles. Uh, especially like the sections where you need to reach a certain place with blue eco still active in order to activate a platform to get more precious precursor orbs. Yes, I found getting those orbs quite addictive, Darren. In fact, I got a bit obsessed with it. What do you think about the combat? It felt a bit simple to me. Affirmative. I didn't enjoy it that much. Most enemies go down in one hit, and I found myself missing quite a bit. The boss fights are still quite good, though, and they're nice and wacky. All three games have no loading times, which was quite revolutionary at the time and still holds up well today. Although there are a few slow opening doors, though. Jack 2 and 3 got a whole lot darker, didn't it, Darren? Affirmative. Edgy. You're edgy. Affirmative. You should at least be dead with all the dark eco I've pumped into you. Set two years after the first game, Jack finds himself in a dystopia called Haven City and is being tortured with dark eco. After being rescued by Daxter, Jack soon discovers he can turn into a dark Jack form, kind of like the werehog in Sonic Unleashed. Daxter? What the heck was that? He then sets off after the man who kidnapped him. Jack was a silent, cheeky character in the first game, but in Jack 2 and 3, not only does he gain a gruff and mean voice, but he also loses that innocence and charm he had in the first game. I bet you've hatched another brilliant plan in that hungry little brain of yours. I kind of miss the younger Jack. Well, he's been through a lot, Darren, and besides, he's more rough and tough because of it, and I quite like that. Daxter still remains his likeable self, though, and adds some much-needed comic relief to these two games. We do your dirty work in the sewers and come back smelling worse than a wet hip hog in a warm barn. <laughs> this could have a serious impact on the lady factor. Jack 2 and 3 deviate greatly from the original, leaving the power cell collecting and eco-based gameplay behind and adding a morph gun into the mix. I quite enjoyed this fusion of platforming with the guns. Yeah, that scatter gun really packs a punch, Darren. Although I found the auto lock a bit hit and miss. In fact, I struggled with many of the controls in this game, especially the camera controls. It will go left and right around your character and in and out, but not up and down. No vertical control? Oh, it drove me crazy, Darren. To be fair, you don't really need it, but I've become to a custom way of things with camera controls and I wanted it. And during sections of the game that let you take control of a gun in first person, you're forced to use the left stick to aim. No, the left stick is for movement. That's the way of things. Also, to go back, you need to press the triangle button. Everybody knows it's circle or the button on the right-hand side, which makes you go back, not triangle. Uh, except if you're Japanese. Well, that's true, Darren. But considering it's a 2012 remake, I think they should have updated the controls, Darren. Well, fans of the original games might want the controls to be just as they were. That's a good point, Darren, but I think you come to the series who are used to playing these kind of games a certain way might be confused by these outdated controls. But I think we should move on, don't you? Affirmative. Now, in Jack 2, Haven City acts as the hub world where you get new moves for Dark Jack, complete side quests, which mainly involve finding an item within a time limit, Good work, Jack. and visit allies who give you missions. But most of them require you to travel outside of the city. Now, Tara, we get a lot of emails from Spawnlings asking for a, a Grand Theft Auto or Saints Row game that is PG rated so they can play it, don't we? And, and I think this is probably as close as you're gonna get. You've got a mini map with quest markers, and you can steal other people's vehicles called Zoomers, and you can even annoy the Crimson Guards. Mostly they don't care what you do, but the moment you touch them, bam, the chase is on. 
The streets and skies of Haven City are pretty crowded, which I suppose makes the city more lively, but you have to travel across what feels like the entire city for each mission, and there's no fast travel, so the people around the vehicles become more of an obstacle. I found myself crashing a few times. Why, Darren, I'm proud of you, admitting that you weren't good at something in a game. You're coming along as a game reviewer, I must say. Affirmative. But you misunderstand. I wasn't admitting weakness. I was merely pointing out a fault in the game design. Oh, well, that makes more sense. Well, I just made other vehicles crash. That works too. At least in Jack 3, it's a more condensed city and you travel about on leaper lizards, which are faster and less prone to crashing. You also gain the ability to transform into Light Jack form, which gives you various powers like creating a shield or healing yourself. But I also enjoyed the new gun upgrades, especially the Beam Reflexor. Much of Jack 3 takes place in a wasteland where you get to ride around in buggies. I thought these handled quite well, Darren, but I still skidded and toppled all over the place. <laughs> oh, you certainly did. I didn't mind the buggies that much, though the one vehicle that really annoyed me was the hoverboard. It's just so hard to control, and for anyone that's ever played a skateboarding or snowboarding game before, the button layout just felt completely wrong. Thankfully, those sections are fairly short. Yeah, such a shame, Darren. I love hoverboards more than anything else ever. Affirmative. Uh, we should also warn the spawnlings that these are pretty difficult games, particularly Jack 2 and 3. Checkpoints are scarce, and timed events will have you retrying again and again and again. But I think we should wrap this up. Final thoughts? All right, Darren. Well, I struggled with the controls at times, and there is a lot of variety here, but it's not the best racer, it's not the best platformer. You could say it's a jack of all trades. I'm gonna give it six out of 10 rubber chickens. Hex would have liked that joke, Darren. These games do show their age in places, but for fans of the series, they're a chance to relive some happy memories. And it is three games in one, so I'm giving it 7.5 rubber chickens.